sure it's set up properly from the beginning. Mm. Whether you're a sole proprietor or if you're gonna start your own LLC. Hey y'all, good morning. Happy March. It's March the 2nd. It is a rainy morning. Um, I am on my way to a, I think it's called Woman to Woman. It's like a, uh, not, I want to say a summit, but um, one of my closest friends, you've seen her in pictures before. Matter of fact, she's in one of the pictures in my last short that I put up, Joy. Um, she's a part of a women's organization and they are putting on a program this morning and I am participating and another one of my really good friends um, is speaking and she doesn't know that I'm coming so I'm super excited to support them in this meeting it's a darky dreary gloomy day but there's sunshine in my heart that was so corny right but it's true it's true um, I am at the light, use the right two lanes to turn onto Jefferson Avenue. Y'all know my directions. <laughs> I am um, a little bit tardy. I wanted to leave home before now, but couldn't figure out how I wanted to do my makeup. Then my hair was acting crazy, so I ended up just throwing it in this bun. I still don't really like the way my makeup turned out, but yeah, it'll do. Um, so I am um, headed there, and I will probably do a little bit of video but happy women's history month to all the ladies out there to all the ladies in the place with style and grace um i want this light to turn green because i don't want it to make me any later than i already am <laughs> like it's the light's fault right <laughs> um this is going to be um i'm thinking about doing a weekend vlog but i don't even know that i'm actually doing much this weekend i'm going to this program um, I'm gonna be honestly probably getting my stuff ready planting seeds in some seed trays to start my spring garden I have some seeds already planted but I might just sit outside and um, plant some more seeds but um, yeah I don't know that I'm actually doing much today this weekend after this good lord and here we go another light turns before my light I don't know what kind of vlog this is gonna be. All of my videos here, yeah, you were too close to me. My videos here lately. 2.2 miles, turn left onto City Center Boulevard. And it's raining. All of my um, videos here lately have been cooking videos, because that's what I've been doing. I haven't been doing much, so my reels have really been my most recent content. Um, and then I did do the pottery uh, painting, which was super fun with um, Mel for her birthday. Um, it's raining. I'm gonna focus on this road. stuff i absolutely hate it hated it what movie was that from or what tv show was that from hated it your guess <laughs> Thank you for that wonderful introduction. And I want to say thank you for the invite. 
Um, as they said, my name is Sarah Boone Newsom. I am the Recruitment and Diversity Administrator for Chesapeake Public Schools. I tell everybody that is my day job, that is my passion, that is my career. But my love is in the entrepreneurship spirit, um, and I do own a beauty school. Let you all know about an unsung hero that has been a blessing in the community, a blessing to our club. Um, she does and gives without receiving, not looking for anything in return. She's very welcoming. She enjoys doing what she does. And that is Miss Viola Valentine. Miss Valentine. Um, she's an entrepreneur too as well. Yes. Mm. Okay. She does, she has children, she's taking care of the First Baptist Church Denby. She's fed as well. This <laughs> is me to do it. And God bless you, ladies, and thank you. And I want to say something to you, ladies. I'm not used to anybody giving me anything because what I do, I do it for God. Mm. <laughs> A five year old? <laughs> five year old daughter. She graduated in. 2001 from Norfolk State University with a bachelor's degree in accounting and currently works at Drucker and Falk LLC as an accounting specialist. She is also an active member officer of the Newport News graduate chapter of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. <laughs> She started her entrepreneurship journey in 2011 and currently is the business owner of Essentials Boutique. Ebony believes in putting God first and everything else will align in place. Five year old. <laughs> Where did you start your business? The journey that led me to my business was working in the school system and seeing some things that I could change that I could not change in the system itself. Mm -hmm. um, after working in there and just seeing the kids come in and they were not ready. So you got kids entering into kindergarten for the first time. Um, they're not ready. Their parents did the basics. So when you're coming into our school system, your child needs to be ready to take those tests. So that means you need to do some research before you send them to school and make sure that they are studying the right material. So that's what started me to take an interest in maybe one day starting my business and working with people. Good morning. Good morning. Um, so I, um, I started my entrepreneurship journey um, 2011, um, I actually was in Tracy, I'm sure some of you might have heard of Tracy Lynn Jewelry. Yes. Um, so I started off when I was a single parent and um, it was an awesome journey. I love her hair back when I was 10 years old, 11 years old, starting out braiding my cousin's hair, the only ones that would let me experiment on them. <laughs> um, and then from there, I decided post-graduation um, from high school to go to beauty school. Um, and I took a stint out of college, took a year off, went to beauty school. And I used cosmetology and working in a salon to fund my way through undergrad and graduate school. Um, so it's always been a love and a passion. Um, I started teaching a little bit when I was in undergrad, um, teaching how to do hair. What are the three most important habits to be a successful entrepreneur? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna just slide in and just give one off the top of my head while I'm thinking about it. Um, consistency. And it has to be consistency um, in your brand, who you are, um, consistency in getting up every morning, consistency in putting in the work. People don't understand that entrepreneurship is not for the weak. Um, 
my full time job, nine to four, is a job that I can cut on and cut off. Entrepreneurship, I mean, I have people that call 10 o'clock at night. Um, I have things to do on the weekend. So it's something that you have to be invested in being consistent across all pieces of the board. And I would say um, flexibility, because just like Sarah was saying, I also work a 8.30 to 5 position. Um, so a lot of what I do, of course, as an entrepreneur with accessories, I have to do it. Sometimes I'll do it on my lunch hour. I'll do it in the evening. And then on weekends, I'll do different events. So definitely being flexible um, and just driven. So for me, um, communication. <laughs> you better have some good communication skills. If you don't, you better go get some. <laughs> you better YouTube it. You better call somebody. You better talk to a seasoned woman, somebody. Because if you don't lay out what your vision is and the expectation, then you're going to get somebody else's what they think and what I thought or I assumed. So communication is everything. It's mistakes first time entrepreneurs can make. For me, I spend too much money. <laughs> um, I had to get rid of the pride asking for help, asking for support. I spent a lot of money getting started. And so as I continued through the journey and saw there were ways that I could have gotten support. And I grew up real fast and said, okay, I'm just gonna start. What is that song, Ain't Too Proud of Bag? I need it, this is what I need. Somebody asked me, it's not, oh, I don't know, or um, mm, I don't need anything. No, I need it. <laughs> For me, I'll just be transparent. Um, you can't always, you can't depend on family when you're starting a business. Mm -hmm. I'll just, you know, I mean, there, you know, you have some that are very supportive, mm -hmm. but you have got to find a mentor, someone that's already been in that in that field that you're in, and you know, look to them for guidance because you know, you have some things like, oh, sure, I'll come support you, I'll come to this journey party. I'm just think, speaking for myself. Um, and then some of them, you know, low key, they'd be like, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. You know, they don't know what your goals are. So mm -hmm. I would definitely say, you know, just have a mentorship, have a mentor. Um, and you have some families, of course, that will support you. Then you have some that don't. So I'm just being honest. You just, you got to have a mentor. That's one of the mistakes that, you know, I think I made. Mean. Um, I think one of the biggest mistakes that people made or what they don't really plan for is the financial piece and investment of it and how it looks. Um, I know it's very cliche to say develop a business plan, but people don't understand that the business plan is a snapshot of everything, not a snapshot of where you are right now, but being able to forecast the next three years and making sure that you have a built-in cushion. Um, it's very easy to say, you know, it takes 5000 to start my business and I have 5000 in the bank. Some people will take that risk and put the 5000 out, but you have to have that cushion. And, and it was trusting in his time. And, and I could preach on that one. Is the hardest thing I would say in life is for us to understand that where we are is where we're supposed to be. And you really don't want to move a minute faster because if you do, you're going to miss out what he has for you. Mm. So. I would say for, my, for, for me, um, sometimes being balancing, balancing, working full time, and then having the business on the side. I know for me, it was just like you all know, I have a, a five-year-old. So it, it, I was very, like prior when I was in direct sales, I was always like on the go, like all the time, just, you know, try like doing trainings and then trying to just, um, you know, be there for my family. And so the one thing I did to overcome it is sometimes you have to just recognize you have got to slow down. I had to personally slow down um, and just really plan. Um, I've gotten back to more into using like my planner <laughs> instead of just you know, having everything I can think I can do it in my head. Um, but that is how I kind of 
kind of overcame just my challenges just with balancing with my new business, you know, with my new business. Um, so that's what I have to do. And keeping God first. So mm -hmm. I can be patient with myself. Mm -hmm. Will you answer my next question? <laughs> <laughs> Which is, how do you balance your personal life with the demands of running a business? <laughs> I'm gonna jump in here, you gotta ask for help, <laughs> okay? Um, and, you know, it's, you gotta humble yourself. Like you said, you have to really humble yourself and ask for help because we think as women, you know, I always tell people they did us wrong when we were growing up and giving us doll babies and houses and kitchens <laughs> and not giving the boys any of that um, because in our minds we are, you know, conditioned to this and we're told that we can do it all as women. So you can run your household, you can run your business, you can do all these things. But it comes with a burnout. Mm -hmm. And it comes with, you know, a point where you have to ask for help. So I figured I'll just take this one, just depending on what industry you're in, do your research. Um, and people say, you know, well, I have my own thing, so I don't need to know what everybody else is doing in that field. You actually do. Um, you need to know who your competitors are. You need to know how to make your product um, your product. So do your research, number one, to figure out, you know, is there a need for this? Is, is there, in this particular area, um, individuals looking for these services? And if they are, then once you figure that out, then make sure you tell your service to be your own but make sure that you have something that stands out from your competitors, whether it be your customer service or whether it be what you offer. But know what your competition is doing because your competition is your competition. If we turn a blind eye to it, we kind of sell ourselves short. And I'm gonna say, make sure it's set up properly from the beginning. Mm. Whether you're a sole proprietor or if you're gonna start your own LLC, just making sure in the beginning it's set up properly. That way you will not get in trouble with the IRS, with the taxes, because they will get you if you're not set up properly. And you know, use the resources that you have, um, or like she was just saying, reach out to others that may already be in that in that industry, but that's that's very important. Okay, so for me, working with children, working with people, make sure it's your passion. Yeah. You're working with kids, you have all these different personalities, you have employees, you gotta explain to them, hey, if you need to step away, you better give me a call because you need to step away. Because this kid, kids will put, put you, push you there. And it definitely have to be your passion. If it's not your passion, don't do it. We will see you on the news. <laughs> <laughs> but it definitely have to be your passion. Do your research, learn how to grow your business. As my counterpart says, make sure, you know, find out what your competition is. Diversity and inclusion. It, it, it has to. It's very difficult for me for me to stand still because being the councilwoman for so many people, it seems to be seem so easy. But I can tell you one thing. Not. A, I ran my first campaign in 2008. I did not come from a political family, but God has just made me. Since I was a little girl, I just always loved studying. I loved school. I would cry. If I was sick and couldn't go to school, I would be crying. And, and now you hear people, talk, uh, young people saying somebody bullying them in school. I, I was the educational bully. I would tell my friend that they had somebody that didn't do their homework or didn't come to school. Girl, you hanging around her. She don't even do her homework. And guess what? She talks while the teacher talking. I, I was a bougie kid about education. Accept money for jails. Mm -hmm. Because we have to have that in the budget. Yep. And, and so, at least now, the aesthetics of our neighborhood, you would not believe the change. And it took some years, some uncomfort, because we had to block off these streets. Because what happened is, all of that wiring has been replaced. But now the new thing is, you put that wiring underground. So the utilities are underground now. And you see how that opens up 
Yeah. How it beautifies Jefferson Avenue, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. And I, I want to clap too. <laughs> like somebody cares and to really know they have a council person who's fighting for them mm -hmm. because you you have to be smart in this business you can't come out here scared because they will scare you off and the biggest thing what do you think they can scare us off from from running because campaigns cost you know so much in life is about dollars and cents mm -hmm. campaigns cost and most of the time in our community we don't have the people that can give us a $5,000 donation, mm -hmm. 2,500. This, this is the money that you have to collect because you have to buy your signs. It's getting more expensive now because you have to be ready on social media, the website. Now they're doing, you gotta pay. They can text, vote Tina mm -hmm. on, you, you, they can text mm -hmm. it. You probably got it from some other election, but you gotta pay for that. All right, y'all, so I, came home and i was supposed to come back and give y'all a recap um i'm back i ran out ran some errands so now i'm back in the house and i can tell you that the event was absolutely phenomenal um diversity inclusion support system knowing where your resources are and networking with one another to find resources for whatever it is that you are trying to do whether it be build a business grow yourself your self-worth or what have you there are people out there who want to help and that was like so strongly spoken um there were stories that were told that resonated strongly with me especially me still being in the workplace and not being a full-time entrepreneur i at one time was a full entrepreneur and my goal is to get back there i don't want to work for somebody the rest of my life I, it's just not what i want to do it's not what i'm built to do i have had successful businesses and i know i can do that again um I heard a lot about grants and who to, you know, talk to and learned about um, just some connections. And so I'm I'm ready to make another move to grow my social media presence as well as to get my own other businesses. I just say that. And so, you know, it's going to happen. And um, there were some stories told about how people um, are treated in the workplace and how they are the token and you know they are hired on to be the token but to bring ideas but nothing to develop from those ideas it's like you know we hear you we see you but we don't hear you for real we just here to say that we hear you and um i uh, i felt some of that and i am working for a company um and I won't say too much about how I feel, but just know I feel them 100%. I feel them. Um, it's amazing that you see people in VP roles and director roles and human resources hiring positions. And to know that they feel the same thing as uh, the feel, feel the same things that I feel some days. It just blows my mind. Like, you know, because you don't think that once they're in those roles you know that we all have our things that we have to battle but then to know what they have to go through it was like dang and they persevere and it spoke to me and then another thing that spoke to me was moving in silence um understanding who you who is in your circle and who is not in your circle and understanding that some of those who are right on the outside of your perimeter they say that they're there but they're technically not there. And so I understood that too. So it was really good. Um, I definitely will participate in more of their events. Um, absolutely amazing. I did some um, soul searching while I listened to them and I took notes. So my goal is to really get on the good foot and do what I need to do for my own business because working for somebody else the rest of my life it ain't it sis no ma'am i'm not built for this um i have had successful businesses before and i will have a successful business again so with that being said this is probably going to end today's video very short um i start back in the gym on monday <laughs> and i'm taking y'all along with me on that note i'll talk to y'all soon remember to like comment share subscribe 
bring more people on over we are at 555 family members and our goal is to hit 600 by the end of march and then the next goal is to hit a thousand okay okay y'all y'all family so bring the rest of the family to the family reunion